Hey y'all, it's uh, about 14 degrees out here right now. Maybe not that cold, but it's a freaking nice skating rink. And I uh, want to do some breaks on the uh, Buick later this weekend. But uh, I got to get it out of the yard. I'm supposed to have a thaw today. When that happens, this yard is going to be impassable. Right now, it's just a big skating rink. <clears throat> so I got me a gasoline. I'm gonna come back here and hopefully not fall. It's just absolutely I have to excuse all my junk. Like a big could be interesting trying to drive this one tire fire car all the way around the yard. Hopefully I'll get enough traction. I gotta move some boards that are currently frozen to the ground and See how she does on a true cold start. Be right back. Well, I should be able to get out across there. No problem. As long as I get it done the next 10 minutes. Um, kind of manipulated the choke a little bit where it's uh, mostly shut. It's a little sticky. I give her a little sniff. Having a new starter on there and new cables is sure gonna help this morning. <clears throat> Hadn't started this in almost two weeks. So there's not gonna be much gas in the old carburetor. Uh, and the battery is not very strong. It popped right off. I'm gonna wait for her to warm up and take a spin across the yard. As usual, I appreciate y'all uh, tuning in. Surprised that many people want to watch what's going on. Most of y'all are probably cab over folks, but I'm a everything's kind of folks. Today, we're going to start by popping that master cylinder off there. Probably doesn't have any fluid in it. And uh, that'll hopefully start letting anything that's left in them lines kind of drain downhill and I'll pop off the little drums and the other drum and then replace all flexible lines, hoses, I guess you call them. Got uh, new wheel cylinders, new front brake pads, well, shoes. Then I've got uh, hardware kits. So, with any luck, before the end of the weekend, I'll be able to go whoop with the old foot and make the car go whoop, like that. It's really, bit, uh, it's really unsettling driving around a car and you hit the brakes and it's to the floor. So we're gonna try to just go ahead and undo that. So follow along, let's get started. Okay, now let's get started. First off, let's take a little peek in here, see what's in here. I don't recall ever opening this. Well, no surprise there. That looks yummy. I'm gonna say that evaporated decades ago. What do you think? We'll set you up and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put some penetrating oil on these. See if I can break them loose a little bit and uh, let them soak. 
this one's been rounded off a little bit not by me but then i'll go in the interior there and uh, lay in my bleached out floor and see if i can pop that retainer off the um whatever you call that thing that you push with your foot brake pedal well what i want to try to do here is just break the uh seal of the nut to the master cylinder see if i can uh okay that was bent just barely break it loose and then i spray it all down penetrating the oil and uh let her sit for a few minutes while i disconnect what's on the inside I say I got a 50-50 odds that these come loose without shearing off the lines. Little tip, you can try to just snug them just a hair before you try to loosen them. That way it'll kind of give it a little whoop to the right until you try it to the left before you try it. Okay. All right, that moved. That did too. I'm tired. My brain ain't working very good today, so can't even talk, so you just have to forgive me for that. Sound like an idiot today, probably. Well, my uh, luck was good so far. Let that sit in there and work for a little bit. I just want to avoid ruining these lines here, if possible. They feel like they're moving, so should be okay. I'm gonna go in there, scoot seat, uh, scoot seat back, try to get the clip off. Let's go do that, it'll be fun. Well, breaking news. I know some of you will recall how uh, these floor pans are a little Fred Flintstone out. Good news. I bought floor pans, and I'm fixing to install them. Fixed! That's a joke. But I'm going to leave them there so uh, critters can't get in the car until I put real floor pans in. So we're down here uh, by my old brake pedal here. This is what she does. Pull out of nothing. We're gonna pull off this uh, lower air conditioning hose. Probably drop a bunch of stuff in the floor. My new floor pans. <clears throat> I've never laid down on the floor of this car to peek under the dash based on the, what used to be in here as far as the carpet goes. I'm sure you don't blame me. And just from a real quick glance, it doesn't look like there's that much advanced rust or anything like that under there. Now's where I dump a bunch of stuff. I think I'll peel up my floor pan. Sorry about the light. <clears throat> Okay, and not surprisingly, the uh, air duct hose broke. I'll go ahead and cut that and bring you back. All right, that's out of the way. Car's wiring appears to be pretty fresh. Doesn't have too many modifications in it. Got a factory tag right there. On the side of the fuse panel's got a uh, 55 written on it. I don't know what that means. Um, I did notice one thing funny. Right here, this, the master cylinder pokes in. I guess the factory didn't uh, put it in the slot where it's supposed to go. They just rammed it in there and just pushed, uh, pushed that thing right out of the way. That rod there is supposed to be through this hole. Right there. Oh, well. It's an assembly line thing. So what I got to do is get this little uh, fella right here out. Where is it? Here. There's a little spring loaded or a little spring clip here. 
pop that dude off of there, pull this pin out. This right here, for those of you who aren't familiar with cars, push the pedal down and the rear brake lights come on when that comes out. Let off, it turns the lights off. That's what this car has uh, the brake lights stuck on all the time. That's because there's no hydraulic back, back pressure pushing that up. So I'll go ahead and see about knocking this thing off. There's no room in here for uh, any of my little tripods, so you're just gonna have to deal with some shaky camera work. Push that up. Shoot it right in my face, probably. There it goes. pin okay now my master cylinder can pull away from the firewall so I'll set you up and we'll go out go out there and pull that master cylinder off and probably just go ahead and pop the new one in there let me tell you fellers if you're gonna be working on cars you need to buy you a good set of ratchet wrenches. These are fantastic. If you're like, oh, I don't want to spend the money, they're expensive. Just spend it, they're amazing. So what I'm gonna do here, just bust this nut loose, bust that one. These have been soaking, like you already know. That came loose real easy. Not as easy. Okay. A little shot of penetrating oil on them. While those are soaking, I'll uh, pop off the blinds. Okay. They're turning real easy now. That's fantastic. It's real easy to tear up these lines. These things will just seize to the nuts. Get a little drink. Okay, looks like they're gonna come right out real easy. ratchet wrench comes in handy on like stuff like that so I got my uh, lines off in one piece they don't look rusty at all that's fantastic got these loosened up okay pretty much all of the uh, Pre-1970 cars, in my experience, have all been manual brakes. All of my drivers are. Now, starting in 70, started seeing a lot more of the power brake setups. Alrighty then. Got to get the other one out and make sure that it's the same. This is a... Uh, Original Delco unit, probably original of the car. Here we got a side-by-side uh, -side comparison of the old master cylinder and the new one. Look at that. That's an eighth inch thick or so crud, all dried up, split out. These units are rebuildable, but in my experience, when it comes to brake master cylinders and wheel cylinders and calipers, just replace it all. You're going to be money ahead. Don't try to get this old junk working. Just not worth it. Get a new unit. Reman unit, I should say. So it's pretty rare to have a problem with a, one of these right out of the box. So it's just good with your brakes that you uh, 
know you got new stuff and don't have to worry about crashing into stuff. Um, these adjuster pedals, some of these kits come with these, some don't. On this one, we got to reuse the shaft in this. Comes with a new boot, but uh, one thing you want to mention is these on most vehicles are adjustable. Um, and there are times where you have to make adjustments on these. If there's not enough tension back, your brake lights will stay on because your pedal will have just a little bit of slop in it, too much free play. So you have to adjust it out that way, you know, to push the pedal up to the point where it'll kick off the brake lights. Alternatively, if you have it too far that way, it'll keep the brakes partially applied and that can run into major problems. So usually I set them up where there's just there's just enough tension on it to push the pedal up against the bump stop and shut the brake lights off. So you don't want it too tight, you don't want it too loose. So it's helpful if you just measure from the face to the center of the pin and then pop them over onto the new one and just match it. But that one's all the way to the end of its adjustment. So we'll just see. Basically, I just don't put that retainer pin on there until I'm done bleeding. Just in case I gotta pop it off, I can just spin this without having to pull the master cylinder back out. So we'll go ahead and uh, pop that dude in there. Just wanted to show you I got this popped off. This just, it's got a little metal thing in there. It's pretty cruddy. Probably just gonna run it through the sandblaster real quick. Put some flat black paint or something on there. And then the pin, you see this pin here is actually seized the plunger is seized up in there it should be all the way out here to the face and it's locked up in there probably three quarters of an inch deep so it's been leaking you can see that sediment these just are not worth fooling with in my opinion like these are 30 bucks just go buy one Well, as you can see, that's a highly effective and fast way to uh, clean some parts up. So I'm going to blow the dust off of them, and uh, we'll shoot a quick coat of some cheap rattle can paint on there and get it put back together. Well, as you can see, with just a uh, minimal amount of work, this thing looks substantially better. This was probably 10 minutes of work waiting on some cheap two dollar rattle can primer to dry and she's in good shape doesn't take that much longer to do it right so i'm gonna pop this on the master cylinder and we'll install that puppy so we got this assembly ready to go in got my new uh freshly blast plunger deal um these are 
a kind of a homemade master cylinder bleeder thing I made. These are just off the shelf uh, aftermarket um, proportioning valve deals. For some of the aftermarket kits, the uh, distribution block for the brakes mounts right here. This is just an extra set I had. I think they're from CPP or somebody like that, but I just uh, tighten them in there, have short lengths of hose right down into the master cylinder and uh, and go ahead and get most of the bulk, the air and the uh, bubbles and stuff out of the system and then leave these tight until, the, until I'm ready to hook the lines up and do the bleeding. So I'm gonna bleed, bench bleed this in the car, but I still haven't done all the uh, hoses and all that. So I don't want to connect my lines and have this dripping fluid through the system. So we'll go ahead and pop her in. Alrighty then. What you want to be careful is when you put this pedal in, this uh, master cylinder in there, that this is oriented straight up and down and that your brake pedal goes in between there. On some cars, if you're off, you just about can't get the thing pushed in and get it where it needs to be. So as long as you put it in straight, it should be okay. I'm gonna stick my head in the car and make sure that I got my uh, pedal in that slot. And I'll come out here and crank these down real quick. I'm afraid I'm going to have to end up pulling the intake and valve covers off this motor. As you, as you can hear, every time it runs, the uh, doesn't seem like that noisy lifter is getting any quieter. Oh, come on. You'd think fella had never done this before. I can't get this nut started to save my life. There it goes. <clears throat> Oh man. Okay. Be right back. Okay, we're good. I'm gonna go ahead and snug this puppy down and put some fluid in it. Crawl back in there and uh, hook the brake pedal back up to it. Okay. Yeah. You've already seen me take the uh, clip out of this in the interior. And since it's hard to get the camera in there, I'm just gonna snaggle my way up in there and clip. Well, I got that pop back in there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and fill these up and I'm gonna hop in the car and go to pumping on the pedals. This process isn't particularly exciting, so I'll just explain what I'm doing. Just going to get in there and just slowly pump the pedal all the way up and down until uh, I look in here and there's not a whole bunch of bubbles. Then we'll move on to uh, putting the car on the lift and working on getting the uh, front brakes and stuff tore apart and new hardware and bearings and all that put in it. Well, as you guys may already have noticed, the car's up on the lift. This wheel doesn't turn very well at all. It's dragging really, really bad. I think it was that side, when I bought the car, it was seized up. I take the the pads off of it. So this is my intact side. When you're doing drum brakes, it's good to do one side at a time so that you can have a side to reference. 
about how your springs and stuff go in there. Don't tear both sides apart at once. I've done this many, many times and I still do it that way so I don't lose any springs or forget which way something went. Especially with these um, hubs that are attached to the uh, brake drums. You don't have to pull all that off just to flip a spring over or, some, or turn an adjuster around or something dumb like that. But you can't hardly push the car. It's just dragging so bad. So we'll zip that off and uh, pull the cotter pin, pull the bearings out, start it on uh, replacing these brakes. maybe eat more animal crackers. Different size lug nuts. A little bit of rust on there. Okay. I'll not be putting that mismatching back on. So, what we got to do is pop this cap off. It's been off about 14 times from the looks of it. Get the cotter pin out, pull the drum off. First step is to get this off. You can use a screwdriver or this, whatever you need to persuade it off. This one's not even on all the way, so. It's not rusty, that's good. Then you find the cotter pin, which has clearly been replaced before. Probably had a brake job at some point in time in its life. Easiest just to cut these off. But other seat should come. Lay everything out on a paper towel in the order you took it apart. That also helps. Trying to get not to get my fingers any more greasy than I got to. That way I don't have to clean them every time I want to shut the camera on or off. I guess that would be shut it off and turn it on. Give me a break. I'm tired. I don't feel good. But we're still going to get this done. Maybe teach a fella or something. All right. Now you get the little metal washer off in the front bearing. Yeah, this thing's tight. The bearing and a washer. These bearings are probably fine. No more miles than this car has on it, but again, bearings are cheap. Man, that is tight. Tight as these are, I kind of think somebody did a brake job on it and kind of adjusted them Ugh, a little too tight. She's coming slowly. Ugh, good Lord. Let me get a pry bar. doesn't help that they've got 40 years of grease and stuff on them and some rust what's happened is uh I can see from the backside some of my uh the springs and the retainers have broke so the pads are just jammed out against the uh the drums 
You can see the pads, but they're coming with it. One of the springs that retain the brake shoe has come off and it's just laying down here, jammed between the uh, adjuster and the rubber plug. Okay, it's turning. I sprayed the crap out of it earlier, so I'm just turning the adjuster wheel, which I'll show you as soon as I get this off. So it's taking the pressure off my pads. I'm just gonna back it all the way in. My drum will, might just fall off of my head here in a second. Some of this stuff in here has come apart. I think it'll come off now. There she comes. That's that. I was trying to get this apart without anything breaking, but this is what had caused the problem, I think. This little adjuster thing, the pin had either fallen out or broke. Probably broke. No, it's still there, just fell out. This fell down there and wedged in between there. Couldn't turn the adjuster. But anyways, now we can proceed. This tool's pretty handy. The stretch and the spring out part kind of sucks, but getting the old ones off, these are pretty handy. I, I recommend buying these. Make it a little less likely to hurt yourself. So what I'm gonna try to do is get all the springs off uh, and then the keepers and take the whole thing off as an assembly with both pads together. Uh, this retainer pin has already fell out, as you can see. So basically, I'm going to unhook these two springs, well, one spring and that adjuster bar, pop this little piece off, and then one unit, all it'll be retained by is this little spring washer. This spring is put on here, kind of in a rigged up kind of way. It uh, just barely hooked. And this other piece is in the way. You probably can't see nothing. I guess I'm gonna have to take this off. Okay, that'll be better. All right, put these to the side. I'm fairly certain that uh, on the eighth day, the devil woke up and said, I'm gonna invent drum brakes. Or something similar to that. Maybe it's the Lord invented them to punish the sinners. Okay. I don't know what fell. Wasn't a part of this. So now all I got to do is pull these apart off the deal there. Okay. And we're going to put the new pieces together in exactly the same way. I'm gonna break clean all these parts off. Uh, the hardware kit comes with all the springs, but it doesn't come with an adjuster or anything like that. So I'm gonna clean them all up and bring you back. So if a feller's doing a brake job, he goes and gets all his tools, and uh, he comes to the time where he's got to take off these old steel lines that go into the rubber hoses, here and here, and same up on the master cylinder. Um, he goes in his toolbox and he gets this open in wrench. Nope, don't want that one. Wrong choice. So a smarter feller goes and grabs his line wrench because that's what this is for, right? It's what you got, right? Wrong. Bad choice. The tool you really need 
is this. This is the only way you're guaranteed, about 95% anyways, that you're gonna get that off, about rounding that thing off, twisting your line up. This is your only choice. Will it put some little marks on your nut? Yes, but it'll break it loose. So I'll show you how to do that. So a feller's gonna wanna get a line wrench to put on the bottom of your flexible hose, just to hold it still so it's not trying to spin. Then the same feller is gonna get his vice grips, get them on there, however you can get them where it's not gonna dig into the frame or the line or anything else. Get it on there and shoot a little horsepower to it Clamp her down good and tight. Then you're gonna grab your other one just to hold this still. Then you're just gonna bust it loose. See how easy that was? It didn't slip. It didn't think about slipping. Now we'll do the same thing here. This one's kind of upside down, but exact same thing. Get her on there tight. Don't be loosey goosey. Lock her in there tight. Get your wrench on the top. Like so. Same story. Now, you can squirt a little looby dooby on there and a little dooby dooby there. And use an open end wrench. Start backing that puppy out. Then you can just give it a little squirt of brake cleaner and spin it out with your finger. All right, I got both these out. No damage at all. Next thing you need to get out are these. Find the easiest way to do that. Just grab them with some needle nose, work them right on out of there. First one. Second one. how badly deteriorated that is. If these were to allow fluid through them, they probably wouldn't allow it back and you'd lock up a uh, brake drum or caliper if you're a disc brake car. On some of these cars, you have this weird setup here. You have a uh, metal, short metal line that has this big old huge uh, nut here that goes right into your wheel cylinder. So I usually recommend just leave that attached to your wheel cylinder till you get it out. Then you can just put the wheel cylinder in a vise and get this out without rounding it off. We'll go ahead and pull the wheel cylinders. Really not a fan of how GM did these. You can't get to the bleeders. That's not the right size. Okay. You can't get to the bleeders. It's hard to get these lines tightened up, but is what it is. Done a bunch of them. Can't get straight on these with a ratchet. All right, so I got the two uh, nuts off the back of that. <clears throat> I'm gonna wrestle this dude out of here. Snaking it out of here with that line attached usually is possible. Okay. Now we can simply take that over to the uh, the vise, wrap it in a rag, clamp it in there, and break that loose. If you try to get that off while it's still back up in there, usually you'll end up rounding it off. 
These are original um, Delco Moraine units. Usually you have a dirt ridge or a little bit of rust right on this back edge of this where the seal rides. You need to spray it off with brake cleaner and then hit it with some 320 or 400 grit paper, sandpaper, just real light. All right, I got this thing out. This is a line you don't want to have to build from scratch. So again, be careful with it. Um, I like to put just a dab of penetrating oil on the actual tube here and here, just so your nut spins freely and it's easy to snug up. And, and by a little, I don't mean hardly any. Although that's nearly impossible with these stupid things. Okay, another important bit of information here is thread this line into your new wheel cylinder first because lots of times these angles aren't perfectly matched with the old one and the you can hit the spindle or just get it jammed up and it's hard to get in. So just thread it in there. Don't need to be tight, just get it in there where it's just where you can still move it. And we'll go ahead and pop that dude in there. You can kind of maneuver this around that way. All you got to do once it's in there is just tighten that. So let's do that. Okay. Might end up having to take this bleeder out. Okay. bleeder down before I drop it. I'm going to go ahead and put this line where it needs to be in this brake bracket or the uh, little bracket that the brake line goes into. All right, I'm going to start my uh, little nuts here that hold the wheel cylinder on. Not going to tighten either one of them, just get them in there and get it kind of close to being drawn up. Okay, the other one. I have to get on the other side. Okay, that one started. Okay, move my trash can before I knock something in it. Okay, I'm gonna reposition you guys. My next tech tip involves the installation of these lines. Don't clamp these things with the clips until you get your nut started. Both nuts, not just one because you get, most often you wind up with just a slight misalignment. And if you, if you got this hammered in there tight where it won't swivel any direction, you can't, uh, can't hardly get the clamp in or you risk rounding off your nut there. So just leave that loose. Once you get it started, kind of go ahead and get it popped up in where it needs to be, then put the clip in. Right. Get that started. Get my hammer. If this was a uh, obviously a restored car, I would not be using a pair of vice grips to do that. But this car is clearly not that caliber. Okay, same story here. This one's even more important because this line's got a lot of flex. So just stick it in there. Get your line started. Don't tighten it. Then wrestle and twist your line till you get it 
where you need it to drop in and put the clip in. I find out that it helps kind of to spin it this way. With your wrench gives you a little more leverage. Okay. Find your clip. Find your hammer. Last thing, we'll take my uh, long needle nose here and straighten the clip. There. Same here. Now, if you want to use a line wrench, you can use a line wrench to go ahead and snug these up. But, a little looser is better. If the thing leaks a little, you can snug it back up. Don't put so much horsepower into it that you round it off. We've come this far without causing any damage at all, so there's just no reason to over tighten it. These lines are pretty soft, so it doesn't take much to get them tight. A little more. Okay. Now I gotta try to get in here, snug up this bugger. Usually you have to have your wheel cylinder nuts or bolts just a little loose to do this because your uh, fitting is up against the uh, spindle. This is just really hard to get to, so. That's why I say you do not want to be uh, trying to put this line on after the wheel cylinder is installed. You want to screw it right in there just like we've done now and it's already in the wheel cylinder. It's already lined up. All right, so what I've done here is I've got my, uh, my new pads, shoes, and I've got my adjuster cleaned up, lubed, my spring in there. Some vehicles you can build out nearly this whole assembly and pop it on here, but this one it doesn't doesn't make it particularly any easier. It just gives you more stuff to fight with. These little push, I guess you call them a push rod. These little deals, you always want to clean them up, make sure there's no rust or anything on the end of them. Then I just put a little bit of uh, dielectric grease or something on them. They go right here. You don't want to tear up your brand new boots. So we'll just put a little dab of stick them on them. Some uh, brake shoe kits you get have a bigger pad on one side than the other. Like this has more friction material here and this one is smaller. The stock ones were all, both pads were the same size. So I can't remember off the top of my head if the, the bigger pad goes on the front or the rear. So I'm just putting it on the front. I could be wrong. I'm sure somebody will crucify me in the comments over it, but whatever. Fact of the matter is it'll work either way. I think it's supposed to be on the front, but I don't remember. Okay. Install those with the slots as close to up and down as you can like that. My spring clip pins, stick them in the holes. I might knock them out, but this one over here is a little more difficult to get to because the spindle arm's right behind it. So then we just put these up there. We gotta align those little push rod deals we just installed with these notches in the pads. And then get our little uh, snap ring pins through these two holes here. Try my best not to knock this off. I'm trying to stay out of the way of the uh, camera, which something like this is quite challenging anyways. Okay. All right, now what I've got to do is install the spring clip. 
they make little fancy tools just for this, but I don't have it. Or I should say I can't find it. Like this. Now comes the part here where I'll probably drop this thing 15 times while trying to get it in here. I try to get it in there and then rotate it 90 degrees or uh, yeah, 90 degrees to get it to latch in. Normally this is pretty easy, but I can't get my finger back in there to turn it. So this could take about 13 attempts. Attempt number one. Okay. Yeah has a little less tension on it, but it's got another part to further complicate things. Anything that's supposed to move, I usually put just a little bit of lube on it. This little metal cup, it's basically a guide, centers this piece. It goes on and then slips right over that. Knock it back out. This is when uh, you had been born with four hands. This would actually be pretty beneficial. Okay. Try to get that centered in there. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing real well or not. Nope, oh, drop my spring. This is a lot easier if you got an extra set of hands, your wife or something to come help you. Mine's asleep right now because it's six o'clock in the morning. Oh, come on, almost. Okay, it's in. Good job. Give myself a pat on the back. Okay. Now comes the part where uh, you can hurt yourself if you're not careful. We got to put the snap springs on from here to here, from here to here. I hate these things and you need to wear some thick gloves and safety glasses. They basically hook in like that, pull up over that. So with my thick gloves, my safety glasses on, I'm going to use my little pick tool I'm gonna hook it on right there. That needs to be, okay. That piece should be uh, moving a little. Different cars are different, but this is pretty typical of the GM stuff. Now the problem is you get this thing up there and you're pulling the tension on it and this, this piece will move or this will slip off and you gotta have a, a lot of pressure on the spring this will probably take a few attempts as well. Attempt number one. If you're counting. Ha, got it. All right. Okay, next up, you got to install this little rod here. It's got this little step in it that goes up to go over the top of your wheel cylinder. It hooks into your self-adjuster thing. Okay, there we go. Now, you put your, uh, your next spring in that goes up under this. Basically, it puts tension on this rod so it don't fall out, pop you in the face while you're trying to do the next part. It just goes down here between your pad That little spring keeps the tension on this adjuster arm and keeps that in place. All right, I'll do the last spring. Put that one into place. 
reapply my safety glasses. Push that up as far as I can. Eh, got it. So this is the finished assembly. Like I said, it does the kits don't come with all the springs. Like it doesn't come with this one or this one. It just comes with your all the white springs, your little green springs. This is not that difficult if you have the right tool. So. My next step is going to be to get this seal out of here. I don't know if you can tell, but this one, whoever installed it before, smashed it in there. Drove it way farther in there than they were supposed to. Use my little seal ripper, pull that out, and get the inner bearing out, clean this all up real good, uh, repack my bearings, and then I'll bring you back when it's time to put it together. See this stuff right here? That used to be grease. Now it's thick like tar consistency it's like if you have never pulled your uh, hubs apart and uh, re-greased them and put new bearings in it I would highly recommend that especially if you like driving you know getting your car out away from home because uh, grease and bearings are a lot cheaper than record trucks and tore up spindles so just buy you some bearings you get them any any part store or rock auto or whatever Repack them, get some good grease in there, and roll on. This stuff here, if I was to try to run it, would not hold up for very long. It's pretty much lost all of its lubrication properties. All right, welcome back. I had to replace a couple of the lug nut studs and the uh, drums. So I just went ahead and just knocked them loose, separated the drums from these. Um, when you do that, you need to go to the drum and just with a file, just take just a little bit of metal off the shoulder of this edge. See where that serrated edge is? That's designed to grab the rotor, or the drum, I mean. So you need to just take just a little bit of the metal off the drum so that uh, they're separate parts from this point forward. Um, I got everything cleaned up. I got grease in there. Got my gre uh, bearings greased. Um, I went ahead on the rotors, or the uh, drums, I sanded the inside of them, still gotta blow them off, but sanded them down to fresh metal. These are the holes I was telling you need to just file just a little bit, just to get rid of the metal so that they don't get stuck. Um, this is a replacement. The one that was on the, the passenger side that I had to beat off of it when I bought the car, it had a couple of fins broken off and a bunch of hammer marks. Since I have a bunch of these laying around, I just went to my parts pile and got a, a good one. In the meantime, if you've never done this before, um, you put a bunch of grease in there, um, get your bearings greased, you drop them in there, your big one, like so. Then you get your seal little feller here drop it in the floor blow the dust off I set it right on there then I get me a board which I can't do this with the greasy hand but I get my board there lay it on the top tap the board with the hammer and it'll just seat that seal and then that'll be ready to go on. And then you go ahead and you put some grease on the uh, spindle. Have our seal in, bearings in, this thing's cleaned up, greased up. We go ahead and just slide that right on there. Give it a good seat. <clears throat> then when you reach over and you grab your, uh, your inner bearing, pre-greased. Then comes your uh, cleaned up washer. Line that in the groove. 
that pushed in there. Lastly comes your castle nut. There's different opinions on how to, how tight to get these castle nuts. What I like to do is I run them up till they're fairly snug, till I can just barely turn the hub. Still turn it. I'm getting stiffer. All right, get it to where I can just barely turn it with the finger. Then I get my big hammer. With the old big hammer, I just lightly wrap around here. Just do that a few times. I'm not not trying to hurt it. Then I loosen it a little bit until the bearings turn free again. Till it's loose. Spin them some more. Make sure everything's nice and smooth. Then I'll snug it up to where I can feel just some resistance. I would say roughly 50% resistance to basically between freewheeling and stuck. Not a scientific formula for it. Once I get it to where I think it needs to be, then you look for the cotter pinhole. And if you can't get to a cotter pinhole without either making it really tight or loosening it up a little, just loosen it up just a hair. You're better off just a hair loose. You don't want to overload that bearing and heat it up. Okay, so I'm gonna clean my hands and uh, go find a cotter pin and turn that to where it needs to be. Now we'll go over the uh, drum adjustment procedure. Like I said, clean up around your holes if you separate your drum from your hub assembly. Um, the only thing you would do different if you left these two as a unit would be you'd have to make all the adjustments through this slot in the back down by the ball joint. But I oversized these holes just a hair and then cleaned up around in here and right there. But anyways, with this roller wheel adjusted all the way in, get your piece, set it on there, and spin it. I can feel pretty much no resistance. So set it in the floor. Get a screwdriver or something to pry this spring in this uh, keeper here up off of the roller wheel so you can spin it. Then you just spin the roller wheel. You see, you probably can't see it, but the pads are moving out. I'm going to go out about 16th of an inch. Still nothing. bit farther that time. I'm probably a quarter inch out from where I started. You can kind of feel when you're getting close because when you put it on there you'll feel some resistance. Still I got nothing when I actually spin it. Get another Another eighth of an inch or so. I should start feeling something pretty quick. Okay, so now I know we're getting close. Now I can feel some resistance. It's a little rolling resistance. You don't want it to immediately stop. You don't want your brakes to drag. That should be okay. 